Rich Toronto here with TMC. We are at Cloud Expo 2012 at the Jacob Javits Center in Manhattan. Thanks for watching us on our program. It's Tom Layden. He is with Ampladata. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's been a great show. Great. Why has it been so great? Uh, a lot of attendees, lots of interest in the stuff that we're doing. Uh, object storage, big data, it seems to be the buzzword today. Uh, cloud is still around, but it's all related. Excellent, so how do you help uh, customers uh, in these spaces with cloud and big data and analytics? Well, first of all, we're trying to uh, educate people on what big data is, because traditionally big data has been seen as big data analytics, but it's a lot more than that. Um, big unstructured data is very important. Uh, people can get a lot of knowledge out of uh, big unstructured data, and we're helping them to uh, store that unstructured big data in a much more efficient way than uh, what they're doing today. So currently, people, um, quite often for archiving purposes, they store their data on tapes, and they have it offline, and, in, and they may consider that to be a cost, because they have to store it. How do you help with that kind of um, environment for, that companies are dealing with, or that kind of situation companies are in? So you got it. Traditionally, people have been archiving a lot of data. They've been putting it on tape, and then it's just lying there. They can't do anything with it. We call that a latency problem. We have built a storage platform that can store your data on disk almost at the cost of tape. And once it's on disk, you can do a lot more with it because you can put applications up on top of that which will analyze your data. It's not like big data analytics, but you analyze your unstructured data. And you get a lot of input from that, uh, information from that. So is it a hardware solution? Do we think of it like a RAID system where we plug things in or do companies deal with their own inexpensive drives and you have some kind of management on top of that? So the secret sauce is in the hardware, and you've said the magic word, RAID. RAID is the technology that has been used for uh, disk-based uh, storage systems for a couple of decades now, but RAID has a problem with the size of disks. RAID was never built for three, four uh, terabyte disks or bigger disks uh, as they're going to come out. Um, the main pr problem here is that to restore a uh, three terabyte RAID disk, it takes a very long time. During that time, your data is less protected, et cetera. I'm not going to go into those details. What you need is a different technology, and we have created something that is called erasure coding, which stores your data much more reliable than disk systems with just a fraction of the overhead. Give me that word again. I missed what that word was. Erasure coding. Erasure coding. Yes. Correct. Okay, and what is that? Erasure coding um, provides high data availability without copying the data. Are you ready for a short example? Yes. Imagine the number 75. 75 is a file. A real file would be a picture, but 75 is going to help us to explain the magic. The way how you would store that number 75 with RAID is you store 75 and another once more 75 and once more 75. That creates overhead. We're not doing that. We're not replicating data. We're splitting up the number 75 in smaller blocks. Take seven and five. Again, that's just an easy example because your picture would be split up in say 4,000 smaller blocks. From that seven and five, we're going to generate equations, calculations. So those equations would be x plus y equals 12, x times y equals 35, and some more equations like that. And that is what we're going to store. We're going to spread those equations all is over the system. Is this kind of like a hashtag, is it, or, or hashing, that kind of encoding? You may want to say that, but it, yes. Much more sophisticated, it sounds much like. Much more sophisticated, yes indeed. So because they are calculations, so we spread those calculations all over the system, but if you lose some of those calculations, that is not a problem because as they are calculations, you can generate them again based on the remaining equations. So with our system, if a disk breaks, we never have to restore that disk. The system is just going to generate new equations automatically without action from the, system, uh, from the storage manager and bring the system back to a healthy level again. The net result is that we provide 10 nines availability with a policy of 16.4. That means you can lose four disks out of each 16. And you only have an overhead of about 52% there, which is a lot more efficient than RAID, where you would need 200% overhead for five nines availability. So we have an efficiency gain, but does that efficiency gain uh, get impacted by the compressibility of the data? In other words, if I have uh, videos that are, let's say, highly compressible, or some kind of data that's highly compressible, are you able to more efficiently uh, encode that? Um, 
the compression game, it's not a compression, all right? The, the efficiency, the saving is, is really by having to uh, copy less data. And I'm glad that you're mentioning video because that happens to be one of the segments that we're very active in. So uh, over the last year, we've really been optimizing our product uh, for the requirements of our Hollywood customers. Um, and, and in that segment, which we call MNE, and we, we, we are working on, on deployments of tens of petabytes exactly for those videos, exactly because we are reducing the overhead there. So imagine that you have a, a one petabyte video project. If you have to store that with RAID and replication, that, that becomes three petabytes. In our case, we provide higher availability with only one and a half petabyte. So compression was probably the wrong terminology, but you've got, uh, I guess there's kind of an arbitrage play between what you have to deal with with RAID, where you're writing the content over and over, you basically are kind of using less storage space for the same amount of data as a RAID system would. Yeah, the, the difference, very short, is RAID and replication, the word says it, is all about replicating data. We do not replicate data, we use smart mathematics to provide high availability. Now, uh, in terms of recalling this information, because it's using mathematics, does that slow down Absolutely the restoring? Not. Absolutely not. Uh, we've talked about our product before. You, you asked about uh, Amplistore XT. XT stands for extreme throughput. We scale our capacity and our uh, performance separately. By adding storage nodes, you add capacity, and you can, you can add as many nodes as you want. By adding controller nodes, as we call them, uh, you scale out the throughput. Just to give you an example, right now one controller gives us about 750 megabyte per second throughput. Our smaller systems start with three controllers that already gives you two gigabyte per second throughput, but it scales linearly. You can just add more controllers and you up your throughput. And we did it exactly because of the Hollywood requirements. And since uh, we're dealing with a competitive technology, we started off by talking about tape, you basically are going to be a lot faster than tape regardless, right? Of course, and actually the use case uh, versus tape uh, for, for those uh, M&E customers, uh, the studios, um, is as follows. The storage that is used when creating a movie is pretty expensive because it has very high requirements. And we don't have a play there, I'm being frank. Once the movie is finished, the storage is way too expensive to keep the movie there, so traditionally, those customers would move uh, the video off to tape. The problem is, once they want to do something with that movie again, say a new release, uh, a director's cut, another language release, they had to take it back from tape, and that takes a lot of time. Not even to mention all the trouble you can have with tape. Now these companies are looking into uh, building live archives, so disk archives, which come almost at the cost of tape, but with all the benefits of disk, and that is where we come in play. This was not possible with RAID, just because you had way too much overhead, but with us, with the reduced overhead, that is a perfect um, use case. Fantastic, besides uh, movie studios and video, are there any other hot areas where you're seeing a lot of interest? Oh yeah, for sure. So uh, the cloud industry, for example. Uh, last week, someone uh, told me that he was so proud about their um, um, public storage cloud implementation. Um, they were using an open source technology. Uh, and he was so proud to say, your data is so secure on our system because we are storing three copies in the cloud. So they were building an Amazon S3-like service. Um, and it, of course, needs high availability. We're thinking three copies in the cloud, really? How are you going to be competitive to a service like Amazon if you have such an overhead? We enable these companies to build a public storage cloud um, with much less uh, overhead, so at a much lower cost, which leaves them a lot more uh, space to make revenue. And since we have a REST API, so we have an object storage, that means uh, we have a large scalable storage pool that is access accessible through a REST API, just like Amazon works, uh, and that work works perfectly for all those applications that run in the cloud. So to some degree, it sounds like you could enable carriers to be fairly efficient cloud providers, or really any company to be a fairly efficient cloud provider because your technology would require less hardware. Absolutely, so there is uh, two types of customers in this cloud uh, space for us. 
One, there is the carriers, the service providers, the guys who want to offer a, um, a storage cloud service, a public storage cloud service. Second, there is the, uh, the startups that are no longer a startups, companies that started off on Amazon because it was easy, but who now have so much storage that it's time to think about how expensive is, or how cheap that, is that Amazon actually? Is it cheap or is it expensive? And if you look at it, three cups is in the cloud, it can probably be a lot cheaper. So for these guys, a lot of these guys have come to a point where it might become uh, a lot more cost efficient to build their own storage cloud, and they can use our system for that. Excellent, thanks for your time today. My pleasure.